Hello, folks. My name is Adam Donaldson, and I support ServerI and AmeriCorps programs in Rhode Island as the National Community Service Program Specialist at the Rhode Island Department of Education. This presentation was recorded on February 6, 2023. I will be talking about the application process for AmeriCorps State Formula Grants. ServerI published a request for proposals and application instructions. It's available at www.serverisland.com slash grants. The deadline to apply is March 30th, 2023. As we move through the presentation, I hope you've got coffee and cookies. I apologize in advance for my voice, any technical mishaps, and to quiet my own wry humor, I have written out a script that I'll try to stick to. Anything as awesome as AmeriCorps is bound to be complicated. If you're here, you probably know something about AmeriCorps already. AmeriCorps is a federal agency, also known as the Corporation for National Community Service, but it's also more than seven different main programs with thousands of subgrantees and partners. And I'm really going to be speaking about what is most relevant to this particular ServerI state formula funding opportunity. AmeriCorps, the federal program, works with states and local organizations. Created in 1993 under the National Community Service Trust Act, but rooted in a fundamental idea of the power of assembly or mobilization for mutual aid. Every year, hundreds of thousands of AmeriCorps members and AmeriCorps senior volunteers serve with organizations working to tackle the nation's pressing challenges. With people serving in more than 45,000 locations nationwide, AmeriCorps helps make service to others a cornerstone of our national culture. In Rhode Island, there are annually several hundred AmeriCorps members and 2,000 AmeriCorps seniors. What's most important to serve our eye is what I call the twofer. AmeriCorps programs in Rhode Island work to both enrich the lives of those who are served by getting things done, and second, those who serve by providing a pathway to education, careers, and leadership roles after the service is complete. AmeriCorps provides annual funding to the state according to its population, and we call this state formula funding. ServerI is the authorized body able to subgrant funds to you. You'll be creating new positions at your organization and inviting folks to long-term volunteer assignments in AmeriCorps that rise to challenges facing your community. Using AmeriCorps members will help you extend your reach. The people power in AmeriCorps positions increases the capacity of your organization to serve more kids, more families, more neighbors in the community. It will also bring new perspectives and diversity to your organization. AmeriCorps participants often have community and cultural competencies and come from a variety of lived experiences. AmeriCorps could help develop your future leaders AmeriCorps provides hands-on experience, developing new skills for its participants to continue work at your organization or to find new paths to help strengthen Rhode Island. And AmeriCorps can help raise your profile. As a federal, state, and local partnership, AmeriCorps provides numerous opportunities to highlight and promote the work of your organization to elected leaders and other funders. You can design a program through AmeriCorps that addresses any community need, educating students, supporting veterans and military families, preserving the environment, fighting climate change, helping communities recover from natural disasters. AmeriCorps has six focus areas <clears throat> seen on the screen. 
And each announcement of an AmeriCorps funding opportunity may identify specific priorities for the competition. I think what's most essential here though, is that you in the community will be bringing forward a need that the AmeriCorps program can address. AmeriCorps is also very clear about activities that AmeriCorps members cannot participate in. These are called the prohibited activities. These are typical to other federal programs and that these resources should not be used for political lobbying or advocacy interfering with um, union activities, participating in re religious promotion, benefiting uh, for-profit organizations, okay, becoming involved in voter registration, or things related to providing abortion services. So I really want to pause and pose a question to you out there in the virtual space. How are you proposing to use AmeriCorps members to address a community need or improve the quality of life in Rhode Island? How is service your strategy? One of the ways that we hope AmeriCorps will work for you is as a multiplier. When AmeriCorps members, when AmeriCorps funding comes to serve our eye, and we provide it to you, the grantee, and then you place AmeriCorps members at multiple sites. At each division, we see the impact of the program lever leveraged and multiplied. As you think about service as a strategy for your organization, it's important that you consider your capacity and commitment to AmeriCorps program management. It can be a lot to take on. You're taking on a project to recruit, train, place, and supervise a team of AmeriCorps members, humans. Recruiting means Although ServerI and AmeriCorps will support your own outreach, you're expected to develop a position description and hire, in quotes, or select AmeriCorps participants. The new AmeriCorps members will need to be oriented to your work, trained to carry out your project, and ideally, these members may earn career credentials or other special experiences along the way that will prepare them for their steps after AmeriCorps. These AmeriCorps members are going to need a schedule, a place to go every day, a system to track their success, a supervision plan. It's not exciting, but time tracking is actually a critical component to AmeriCorps supervision as members are working towards completing a term of service that's measured in hours. One of the things you'll see at the end of this presentation about writing the application, it's the biggest challenge we see in first time applicants, um, applications have in writing out what they are going to do is that they don't explain how. We're very interested to know how you will recruit, how you will train, how you will place, and how you will supervise AmeriCorps members. So who are these AmeriCorps members? The basic requirements for participation in AmeriCorps are written into federal legislation. They must be 17 years of age of older. A majority of members in Rhode Island are in their 20s, but there are also many serving today in the age range of 35 to 50, as well as individuals into their 80s. Participants must have or be working towards their high school diploma, and the majority of current members serving in Rhode Island have some college or a college degree. 
Participants must be citizens or have permanent resident status. AmeriCorps has an enrollment process that verifies social security numbers and citizenship status. Participants must also agree to a criminal history screen. Failure of subgrantees, organizations like you, to follow the criminal history check procedures can result in repayment of grant funds. But you, the applicant, get to decide your, for yourself what are the suitable um, requirements for the individuals who will be doing service with you. How will you select them? What skills do they need to possess? Similar to creating a job description. AmeriCorps members receive specific benefits because membership has its privileges. That's why we refer to them as members. They can receive a living allowance that you will determine. They can put student loans into deferment. Um, they also receive an educational scholarship called the Eli Siegel Education Award. Full-time members are provided health insurance and also can participate in a federal child care benefit. And we know that AmeriCorps will be part of the journey of an individual to their next step in career or education. AmeriCorps also provides an adventure, an opportunity to live out one's values and meet the moment um, of where we find ourselves in our environment today, coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic and addressing um, economic needs in our state. I mentioned earlier that living allowance is a benefit. And I mentioned that things in AmeriCorps can be complicated. It's important to know that AmeriCorps members are not employees of your organization. By law, they do not earn an hourly wage or an annual salary. However, to support their living while being able to dedicate significant time to an ongoing volunteer project, they can receive a living allowance. Every program determines in their budget what the living allowance will be for members based on a range that AmeriCorps makes available every year, as shown in this table. The amount that you determine for the length of service can be divided weekly or by the number of pay periods that your organization uses during the time that that individual will be in service. The member then receives a living allowance in equal payments, regardless of the hours that they actually serve. In today's environment, Server I recommends that you consider a living allowance of $25,500 for a 1700 hour term of service over the course of a year. But your projects in organizations values, the resources you have available, your selection needs will all determine how you budget for living allowance. Living allowance for AmeriCorps members is often the largest expense in an application budget. All right, so how do you partner with AmeriCorps? How do you apply to ServerEye? What are we getting towards here? Well, ServerEye is the public authority responsible for managing AmeriCorps state grants in Rhode Island. Every state has a Commission for National Community Service or a governor appointed volunteer board in this role. And here, our Commission for National Community Service, operating as Server I, is housed at the Rhode Island Department of Education for staffing and administrative services, systems, and grant management. So, 
That's why you're talking to me, Adam, at the Rhode Island Department of Education on behalf of Server I. Server I has a strategic plan for 2020-2023 called the State Service Plan that articulates our mission to catalyze inclusive, equitable service opportunities to strengthen Rhode Island. And all of our grant work falls under our state savers plan. I'm just gonna pause for a second to highlight and notify you, of course, that this is only one of the many ways that local organizations can actually partner with AmeriCorps and it, this specific RFP. Server I promotes, but does not directly manage other AmeriCorps initiatives, what are called NCCC, VISTA, and AmeriCorps Seniors, to name a few. These programs all have distinct features and separate application procedures. At a very high level, VISTA places a volunteer for a year in an anti-poverty organization to help build capacity to deliver programming. And C members are not recruited actually, but arrive in a passenger van for a six week sort of intensive service adventure under your supervision. I'm very interested in talking to you if you wanna know more about these other AmeriCorps opportunities, or you can visit the website americorps.gov to learn more about them. So on our website, serverisland.com slash grants, you'll find our funding and resources page where you can access the request for proposal and application instructions. It's most likely how you came to be listening to this video. And there are also, I know it's difficult to see this screen right now, um, but there are also a number of additional resources there to help you with your application. You will find there, for example, the exact scoring rubric used by our application reviewers, training videos on specific parts of the application, the logic model, the performance measures, and budgets, including templates that you can use to draft these parts of your application before you go to the online system that we'll introduce called eGrants. Really highly recommend that you explore um, that entire web page. So to reiterate, through this RFP, you can um, pursue any area of community need through the AmeriCorps grant program. There are priorities described in the RFP and they are very nice, but they are not necessary for your proposal. Those, pro pro <laughs> those priorities include intermediary organizations. So let me explain. To manage a greater number of AmeriCorps members and achieve a geographic reach or greater number of beneficiaries, we believe a successful model is to have a single eligible applicant or intermediary develop the application and oversee the implementation of a program that then engages multiple other community organizations, schools, or public partners as host service sites. Each member of this consortium or collaborative may not have the necessary program management or fundraising capacity to carry out the AmeriCorps project, but together they can be a very effective model. Another priority we continue to have as a state commission is extended learning. Extended learning means proposing a partnership with one or more schools to address student, academic, social, emotional, health, or other development goals. Extended learning can refer to instruction or experiences that occur outside of the classroom, 
online before school, after school, summer, or something else I haven't imagined. The proposal needs to address uh, if there's any targeted support for multilingual learners or differently abled students, students who are addressing homelessness or other target demographic groups. Then we have the priority for planning grants. Server I will give preference this year to proposals describing a planning process to develop a future AmeriCorps program in order to ensure a higher quality implementation or perhaps to reach underserved, underserved populations or communities. As described in the RFP, planning grants do not support AmeriCorps members in service, but give funding for staff, consultant time, or other expenses to allow time and financial resources to determine and explore if AmeriCorps is feasible to come up with the program design, including a logic model, develop um, what the plan is to respond to the community need, and to build the organization's capacity to host AmeriCorps members in the future. To review eligibility and thresholds, I'm sure that if you're listening to this, that you are eligible to apply for this AmeriCorps funding. Unless you are a for-profit business or primarily organized for lobbying purposes or have previously been um, convicted of a federal crime. We welcome all nonprofit organizations, um, school districts, colleges, universities, local and state government agencies, faith-based organizations, and recognized Indian tribes. It is not exclusive to registered 501c3 organizations. The RFP does identify some additional requirements that must be met by the organization or in the proposal, and we call these thresholds. Really to protect Rhode Island nonprofits against finding themselves charged with federal debts or named in congressional payment integrity reports, we are limiting this opportunity to organizations that have experience with financial management and complete annual audits. There is a minimum requirement for staff time as well. Minimum, I said, not maximum. For a planning grant, that's 25% of annual time. And for a traditional AmeriCorps grant with members, that's 50% of annual time. This can be met by one individual or a number of individuals on staff. There is a minimum requirement of four member service years for the traditional grant. This means four humans serving a full work week for 10 to 12 months, or perhaps eight people serving a part-time capacity for those 10 to 12 months. I will explain in a minute what member service years are or MSYs when you get hit with the jargon um, in just a minute but the threshold is four. This grant award is for a one year period. The start date is August 1st, 2023 for activities. The one year award is related to Server I's current uh, operating environment. I feel like I've used that word environment a lot, but there are just various funding sources and structures coming to bear where one year is what we're able to offer. You'll have the opportunity to recompete for a three-year award um, in a year from now in January 2024. The RFP describes three different funding opportunities or grant types. One is a cost reimbursement planning grant where there are no AmeriCorps members planned, you know, in in the next service year, but time is being taken 
to plan and study the feasibility and build the capacity of your organization to develop a future AmeriCorps program, most likely one that you would submit an application in uh, January of 2024 to try and win. The other is a traditional AmeriCorps program to put a team of AmeriCorps members into service starting sometime after August 1, 2023. The third is what we call an education award only program or professional core fixed grant. You should read more about this in the RFP, but in this model, a um, significantly less funding is awarded um, to support this because there is the idea that no living allowance is being uh, paid to the AmeriCorps members. They still can access AmeriCorps benefits, including earning the educational scholarship. Um, but the amount of funding that the organization receives to support the work is significantly reduced. In return, some of the requirements and administrative procedures are also, um, are also simplified. So unlike other grants that announce we're awarding $50,000 for this purpose, AmeriCorps grants are funded in proportion to the number of AmeriCorps members and their terms of service. So to understand how much funding you might be eligible for, you have to have a, a plan of attack of how many members will be serving and for how many hours you'll be serving. And then you will need to use the chart that is visible now and available in the RFP to calculate the member service years. When an individual agrees to enroll in AmeriCorps, they agree to a specific term of service measured by hours. AmeriCorps has decided that one member service year is equal to 1,700 service hours over the course of 10 to 12 months. This requires you to work or serve anywhere from say, you know, 36 to 45 hours a day to accomplish. From that one member service year, over time, AmeriCorps has designated other specific terms of service as shown in the table and created a uh, proportional relationship um, in these uh, decimal equations to calculate what proportion, if you're in that term of service, you know, how many member service years uh, is that equivalent to? So AmeriCorps and ServerI make our grants based on a published amount for every member service year. In the RFP um, published in 2023, we stated that the default amount of funding for every member service year would be $23,000. If you meet specific other requirements in your budget, you can request a higher amount per member service year, which is $25,000 or even $28,000, um, depending on uh, the amount of living allowance you're providing your AmeriCorps members in the amount of evaluation activities. Um, that you're undertaking. This chart um, is included in the RFP and it shows an example here where a program is proposing to have four 
humans in service for 1,700 hours in AmeriCorps positions for a full year, but also then 24 additional folks who are only actually going to come in during the summer months. And so they're going to only do 300 hours. Um, and this is uh, perhaps a, uh, you know, an academic enrichment, extended learning uh, program for, for uh, middle school students. Um, so the four positions are valued at one MSY each for a total of, of four, but the 300 hour positions um, are at a fraction of that. And the math of 24 members times the decimal in the table is equivalent to 5.08. So we arrive at a total MSYs for that grant of 9.08 MSYs. And we usually do round to the um, to two decimals. We then multiply that by $23,000, which is the amount that we are allowed to claim under this RFP. And the total result is $208,840. So that's our target when we create our budget. That's the amount of federal funding we can request from AmeriCorps through Server I to support this program. You can also budget for less but you can't budget for more. It's important to understand that in addition to that, these grants do have a match requirement. That match requirement is a minimum of 24%. And in developing an application budget, you're going to have a total cost for a line item which is split or shared between a partial amount in the CNCS share and another partial amount perhaps that is coming from you and your uh, local resources in the grantee share. This relationship or split, um, the allocation of share, among the total is, you know, how you decide to build your budget. But at the end of the day, the total match of grantee share has to be 24% or higher. Grantee share can comprise of purchases you make with cash from other grants or fundraising efforts, operating reserves. Um, it can also identify things that are in-kind contributions, such as donated supplies, the personnel time of other partners who are supervising AmeriCorps members, perhaps an intermediary model, or the professional services of consultants who provide training or other services to your uh, AmeriCorps projects. Um, as a, as a note for the future, during the implementation of your program, you'll be reporting on a monthly basis your costs in order to be reimbursed. And the approval of that reimbursement will require that you continue to meet the 24% or higher uh, matching requirement. There are very detailed budget instructions in the RFP um, document. We just wanted to highlight that this is a requirement. I also want to explain um, something about match. As many applicants misunderstand the match requirement a little bit, the match rate is not applied to the amount that you request but actually the larger amount of the total budget. So to estimate the match requirement, you have to use the calculation shown here and also described in the RFP. To use our example, 
of the $208,840 that came from our 9.08 MSY project, we are going to divide that figure by one minus 0.24, or really 76%, and arrive at a minimum total project budget of $274,789. If we do that calculation of the total project budget and we subtract what AmeriCorps is providing, the $208,840, um, the difference of that is approximately uh, $66,000. So we can estimate as we build out our budget that in addition to the AmeriCorps funding we've requested, our budget is going to have to include $66,000 in grantee match. Or to be precise, on the screen, $65,949. It's kind of confusing to listen or talk through, um, but it's one of those things where if you trust the formula, um, you'll arrive at the right numbers and you can plan a successful budget. This should really drive home for you if it wasn't clear already that from hints or suggestions that the AmeriCorps funding stream is not going to fully fund your proposed project. Not only does it intuitively look like maybe there isn't enough money there to run the project you imagine, but there is a match requirement. Um, that comes from AmeriCorps, and it's not something that Server I is able to adjust at this time. When designing your AmeriCorps program, you of course identify the number of AmeriCorps members and how um, many volunteer hours you want them to complete, and that puts them into these different slot types or terms of service. We talked about how 1700 hours is sort of a full time, full year position. The three quarter time or 1200 hours aligns pretty well with serving uh, seven to eight hours a day over the course of an academic school calendar and 300 hours, um, I had mentioned earlier, we often see like a concentrated um, sort of six to eight week summer program, um, fits a nice 300 hours, uh, but you can also do things that are part-time as you design the schedule for these individuals and it, it reaches a certain amount of hours. Again, you're gonna include a budget for living allowance in your application, and it's going to need to um, follow this chart. So like member service years, every, um, every term of service, uh, you might calculate a different living allowance. Because AmeriCorps members are volunteers, but to support their long-term position, they need housing, they need food, they need basic needs, soap. The living allowance is not a salary or wage. Again, it's gonna be paid in equal installments. And let me see, this table is really showing both the minimum and maximum uh, requirements for the year. But again, you are going to de decide for yourself what that living allowance is going to be in your budget. The RFP identifies some 
uh, additional requirements for the AmeriCorps program in Rhode Island, I would highlight our expectation that AmeriCorps members wear uniform parts or be immediately recognizable in the community as AmeriCorps members while they're serving. We're also very rigid in following the AmeriCorps system of using third-party vendors, TrueScreen and FieldPrint to conduct criminal background checks on any staff or AmeriCorps members identified in the application budget. So I've tried to highlight some of the features of the grant and wanna talk now about um, the application submission itself. AmeriCorps is a federal funding source and to apply your organization must have an active registration on a website called SAM, sam.gov. As details in the RFP, you need to enter a unique entity identification number or UEI and the exact spelling of the contact information on the SAM website for your organization into the AmeriCorps application system. The AmeriCorps application system is called eGrants. So you're going to need to create a user account in eGrants as well. I think our RFP has pretty detailed information on these steps, but what's important to know is that these steps take time. You need to get them done immediately, make sure there aren't any technology challenges or hiccups or delays in paperwork so that you're able to access these systems and focus on the content of your application. Which is extensive. Um, your application in eGrants will include of a a few basic facts of uh, when you want to start, August 1, what communities you're going to be impacting, who are, who is the main point of contact or program director. Um, in the first few pages of the application, you'll be able to follow the prompts fairly easy and understand the information that's needed. The instructions will talk about a standard form face sheet. It's important to understand that you will not actually be able to um, see or interact directly with this face sheet within the eGrants system. But when you go through a process of submitting or reviewing your application and the system creates a PDF for you that you can then print out or share with other uh, colleagues. It creates a cover page or a face sheet. And that face sheet will include the information that you've entered in other places within eGrants, such as who the program director is or what your UEI number is or what your uh, total funding request. Is. So when you see references to face sheet, just please understand that um, you've already entered the necessary information and the system is self-generating uh, that face sheet. The application also consists of written narratives. In the RFP, we identify that the application narratives cannot extend beyond 10 double spaced pages as printed out from the eGrant system. And we're going to talk more about what's in those narratives in a minute. The application also requires the entry of a logic model into eGrants and the selection of a performance measure in eGrants and the completion of a budget in eGrants. In addition, our application process requires the submission by email of a recent financial audit um, as well. If your application um, describes evidence that informs your thinking or your design evaluation of past work, you can submit those documents up to two as well by email. 
it might be possible that for further information, clarification, or as a special condition of funding, we might reach back out to you and request additional documents. But otherwise, it's really only the financial audit that's required and evidence reports that are optional to be submitted by email. We don't really want to receive anything else at this time. Throughout the RFP, there will be specific notes that this applies to a planning grant, but not to traditional grants, or this is something to note for traditional grants, but not planning grants. And hopefully um, that's able, you're able to track that quite easily. And if not, please do ask any questions because of course um, they do have, uh, you know, they are different and they are scored differently in terms of um, the applications. The tables on the screen now describe how your submitted application is um, scored in terms of a point system. It's important to understand that the planning grant and traditional grant are different. The planning grant seeks information about the identified need and primarily asks, how will you use your year to do the planning? What are you actually going to do and who is involved? It's very helpful to sort of organize it often through like a timeline or some other structure um, to clearly communicate the steps that you're thinking you need to complete. The traditional grant has a focus on what the AmeriCorps members will actually do and what will be the results. How many AmeriCorps members? What are they going to do? When? Where? What is the result of their service activities? Who's benefiting? Why AmeriCorps? Why not do it some other way? And how are you going to recruit and select these AmeriCorps members? What kind of experience are they going to have? What kind of training and support are you providing to the AmeriCorps members? AmeriCorps members? AmeriCorps members, something about AmeriCorps members, lots of AmeriCorps members. Now, the exact questions of the narratives are in the application instructions. And ServerEye has published in Excel format the um, exact review sheet that reviewers will be using to score each grant, which you can access at our uh, slash grants web page. So I want to just highlight some secret, not really super secret, hot tips. In that scoring system, the need statement is only three points out of the 110. So it really only warrants a few sentences, a quarter page. You only have 10 pages to respond. And applicants really frequently elaborate too much on the needs of their clients or their own organization. I need to highlight a few specific, well-researched uh, facts. Reviewers want to be able to have a picture and clearly understand what AmeriCorps members are doing every day. It's important to impress us by cleaning up in the language, understanding that AmeriCorps is a volunteer service initiative and that AmeriCorps members are not hired. They do not work or other employment related language. I think that it's super helpful to answer the questions in the order of the application and refer to the rubric um, if you need to, to understand the order and to understand what the reviewers are looking for. And don't skip anything um, because that results in a zero for that particular question. And when it comes to receiving 
a score of excellence in a particular section. It's really about explaining how things are done by you, not what's done. You will have a recruitment plan. Okay, how did you determine that recruitment plan? What are some of the specific elements? Who's going to follow through and implement those elements? When? Um, it's really, again, about how. Uh, so every time you see a question and it says, what is the proposed activity, think to yourself, okay, how are they going to accomplish that service activity? How did we decide that that should be the service activity? Layer in those how questions. The application in eGrants requires that you submit a logic model in the system. There is, in fact, uh, a template for the logic model and a video um, produced by ServerEye to provide training on what we mean by logic models, which is available on YouTube and the Slash Grants website. Ideally, you would, in fact, start your application by doing the logic model and have it as the basis of your program design, which you then go on to describe in the narrative. The key ideas of the logic model are, what is the proposed service activity? How much of it is delivered? What are the immediate results or outputs for whom? And what change in knowledge, behavior, or condition occurs an outcome of um, the services that you've delivered? The Logic model is not about changes for the AmeriCorps members, please note, but for the beneficiaries of the activities that the AmeriCorps members complete. It could be people, in most cases, students, neighborhoods, acres of land, um, et cetera. Part of the planning grant activity is to spend time developing a logic model. So you'll see in the RFP instructions that if you're submitting a planning grant application, you actually can just enter not NA or not applicable um, in the logic model part of the application. An AmeriCorps grant also requires the submission of performance measures. Every grant application has to identify one performance measure to assess the success and impact of the project. A performance measure consists of two aligned parts. One is the output and one is the outcome of the primary service activity. You can create what's called an applicant determined measure um, by describing your own efforts, or you can refer to a series of national performance measures that AmeriCorps has already described for you. National performance measures are not required, but if what you're doing is close to or aligned with those performance measures, we do require that um, you refer to them. As an example, in the area of education, if you're serving students, there is a output national performance measure called ED1A, the number of individuals served in the education program, the students, as well as an outcome improved academic performance in the national performance measures, which has a designation ED5A. In the application, you're going to write in the performance measures some more details about how you measure improvement. Um, is there an examination? When is it given? How do we know it's a, a good examination? Is there a survey? 
um, or an interview or some other way that you assess that improvement has occurred. Performance measure instructions are a separate document on the server I website. Yes, you got it, slash grants. Um, the performance measures will also appear in your logic model and in your narrative section when you're describing your program design. And that through line, narrative, logic model, performance measure, and budget, right? They should all have cross references and sometimes repeat information for clarity. The final part of your application is going to be the submission of a budget. The application review does score the budget, and it is a significant part of the overall score. It's important that the budget itself explain how you calculate each cost. For example, writing out that it's $15 for a t-shirt and you have 10 members, so 15 t-shirts times 10 members equals $150 in your budget. It's also important that the budget align to all the activities in the narrative and demonstrate that there's a sufficient um, series of expenditures to implement a successful program, including in particular, right, staff time for program management, um, perhaps training or supplies that AmeriCorps members will need depending on uh, what your project proposes to do. And again, there's a recorded training dedicated just to budget development um, that we provide a link to near this RFP on the Slash Grants website. We also provide an example budget for a traditional AmeriCorps grant in Excel format on our website. AmeriCorps does have a specific budget format that's required in eGrants. This includes specific categories, personnel and fringe, travel, training, supplies, evaluation, living allowance, member support, and indirect costs. It also includes for each line item how that total is then shared between the CNCS share or grant resources and potentially a grantee share or organizational resources. Server I prefers to see every line item has some share in it rather than uh, a zero, um, but it is common that um, applications will come to us um, with specific line items, sort of 100% in CNCS share or 100% in grantee share. It's a applicant's choice. Your application um, should address, of course, the AmeriCorps program or project itself, not the entire organization. Some typical costs include um, travel to visit where service is taking place, um, training certification programs or training consultants, supplies like office supplies or AmeriCorps uniform parts, the cost of conducting criminal history checks, the living allowance for AmeriCorps members, uh, perhaps healthcare or other supports for the members. We want, I will say that um, Server I has never received a perfect budget. Applicants selected for a grant award can likely expect that we will ask questions and require modifications um, prior to determining what, what the final uh, award amount is, but also just the clarity um, in the budget so that um, reporting down the road is facilitated more easily. I do wanna say finally, um, 
please submit questions by email to Adam period Donaldson at R I D E period R I period G O V. Do not, do not use the video comments feature here to ask a question. Uh, questions applicable to all applicants, um, applicable to all applicants will be compiled and shared on the RFP website so that everyone can see them. I hope this introduced some of the key features of the grant. Uh, I know it's not as thorough as the RFP itself, really. Um, I look forward to supporting your application, which again is due on or before March 30th, 2023. Thanks so much.